The words are reaching Maria's ears like dialogue through water. It's all it's all muffled like through a filter. Your eyes are struggling to open. It's like they're sealed shut with dried blood or a heavy hangover. You can still remember them. But you are able to pry your eyelids open to see what's going on. You know immediately something is the matter. You never wake up at night feeling this way. And the shuffling of bodies around you tells you immediately that someone means you ill, to put it mildly. These people should not be in your hotel room. They should not be picking you up by the arms or under the arms and by the legs. No, you are awake. There is a group. You immediately see three people, one man, two women, manhandling you, resting you from the bed. And you don't know where they're taking you, but it's daytime. I immediately try to get out of the man's grip. In that case, could you roll your strength and let's go for athletics to wriggle your way free. I'm going to impose a dice penalty though. Uh, You are a minus two dice because it's daytime. So one success. One success. You're able to get your legs free from the man who had grasped them, but the woman still has you under your arms and leads to you twisting in place as you fall off the bed in a bit of a jumble your legs jelly like they aren't used to walking at this time quite frankly Uh, one of the individuals staggers back a man who through the haze you can just recognize briefly as having a scar down the side of his face won't look at you face on and he says oh well she's not supposed to be awake she's not supposed to be awake so I know, I know, I'm... How, how'd you knock one of these things out? She didn't tell me that she would wake up. If you were able to get into the main hotel room, uh, essentially the area where you've got your bar, your sofas, and so on, you may be able to wake Natalie, uh, because she was just sleeping beneath one of the tables. But it seems like a long way for you to go from your bed to your bedroom door. Between you and the door... You've got these three individuals, one of whom is still grasping you. There's a TV set hanging on the wall. Uh, The windows have got night blinds and uh, down thick curtains. No light is getting in. And these people are operating largely in the dark. They've got some dim lights on them. Uh, So... There's a vase on the side table. You've got a chest of drawers, a wardrobe, the kind of things you often find in an upper-class hotel room. There's the ensuite bathroom, but that would really be going the other way. The best course of action is to get myself free and perhaps arm myself, um, either with a vase or maybe a nightstand. So what I'm going to try to do is... I'm still on the bed, you said. Uh, you've just fallen off the bed as the as you manage to kick the guy away, uh, the man with the scar down the side of his face, your feet land on the floor, uh, resulting in a woman, a strong woman, uh, with her right arm under your right armpit and her left arm under your left. And she is currently holding you, the only person holding you, and you can feel her grip tight on you, but she is shaking. Uh, The other woman in the room, who so far hasn't done much, she's standing beside the TV. She says, We were told to use a stake as a last possible option. Try and knock her out. Okay, that's really bad. I need to get up on my two feet and perhaps stomp on the woman that's holding me. Her Like, stomp on her foot just so that her grip might loosen out of shock and then grab the base. Excellent. Roll a dexterity and brawl, please. 
Okay, one success. <laughs> you are successful in getting to your feet and bringing your heel down onto the woman's foot. There's a crunch as the Vitae surges through your body. The beast inside you knows that you are in danger. You are very close to just bursting free with frenzy right now. And that is channeled through the force of your leg and your heel coming down onto the top of this woman's foot. She lets out a sharp shriek. You are able to grab the vase on the bedside table. Smash it down on her head. You grab it and swing it, and it breaks satisfyingly over her head, blood spattering across the wall as you clearly cut into her skin. The other woman, who was stood by the TV, pulls what looks to you again it's almost in a drunken haze like a poker a sharp rod from inside of her jacket and lunges towards you with it you trying to dodge out of the way you're going to try and parry it i'm going to try to parry it so that i can disarm it from her Uh, i would like you to do a i think melee and dexterity please again a penalty The blood on the wall is making you hungry. Yeah, no successes. As she strikes at you with the poker and you flail out, your disorientated, almost delirious state prevents you from grasping the metal and grabbing it from her or hitting her with her own weapon. Instead, it just strikes against your arm. It doesn't connect with your chest. It doesn't go through your heart, but you know that's exactly what this woman jabbing you with a poker is trying to do. The other one behind you is moaning slightly from the wound to her face, but you don't think she's going to be out of it for long. And the guy with his scar is looking around. You think he's trying to find some kind of weapon he can use against you. She knows from her training that this is a really bad move, but it's the only thing that she can think of from this position that she's standing in with a bleeding arm is to try to knock this woman unconscious as quickly as possible so that she can get to the other two kidnappers in the room. So she tries to balance herself before she goes for a high kick from the left side and hope it connects. And are you using potence in doing so? Mm -hmm. So you channel the Vitae through your leg again and try and strike out against the woman with the poker. Your bare foot connects neatly with the side of her head, and just as when you brought your heel down on the other woman's foot, you hear something, not just crunch, but snap. The strength in your legs, in your entire body, frankly, while you have Vitae pumping around it, is immense. This is what you are made for. You are a bodyguard. You are at some points an assassin, but what you certainly are for the family is a killer. And whether intentionally or not, you think through your haze that you've either broken this woman's skull or her neck as her head twists and she collapses. Unfortunately, as you focus on her, The scarred man picks up the poker from the floor. You have the opportunity. You may be able to disable him as well. There's that woman behind you too. Who are you going to go for? It makes most sense for me to go for the man. Mm -hmm. Since I know that he's fully conscious and he might by now gotten all the courage he needs to take action rather than the woman who... I'm hoping might still be a bit stunned, and if I successfully take down the man, she might be intimidated enough to allow me a few seconds uh, of breathing room to either listen to her pleas for mercy or me taking her out as well. Yes. So how are you going to attack the man? Hmm... How is he currently standing? He he grabbed the poker. 
Yes, he is down on one knee, essentially. He'd leaned down, picked up the poker. It is now pointing up towards you. His head is around um, abdomen height with you. Mm. So he's looking up at you. The poker is pointing up towards you. He isn't getting the opportunity to say, no, wait, or please don't hit me. You have the opportunity. You may be able to take him out, but you are increasingly sluggish. So I try to go for a sucker punch with my still whole arm. Okay. Uh, so you bring your fist towards his bent over chest, I assume, trying to drive the wind out of his lungs. Uh, I, I would like you to do a brawl and strength, please. Minus two. Barely a success. Barely a success. It's enough to connect. Your fist drives into the man. You hear the air escape from his body as ribs shatter beneath your fist. Yes, this is what you are made for. Yes, you are a lethal weapon. This is exactly why the family hired you to protect Ray. Poor Ray. And yet, it just isn't enough. The numbers game, at this point, plays against you. As the woman who was behind you, who you'd smashed the vase into, has been able to regain enough stability to use her own stake, one from her jacket. You feel it penetrate through your back, between two ribs I'm going to give you an opportunity here Maria you can try lunging away trying to escape it although again your strength at this time and your certainly your speed are greatly impaired you could try to elbow her in the face trying to just disable her before the poker goes through your heart or whatever it is she's using for a stake. You may be able to think of something completely different. She's behind you. She's stabbing you. What are you going to do? I feel like I should try to return the favor that she's doing me. Even though my strength is quickly running out, I'm hoping to... You know, at least break something. But if, if it were possible, I would just punch straight through her chest if I so could but I am at least not going down without fight so you bring your elbow back toward her yes the sleep of the day exhausts you at just the wrong time in what is in mechanical terms considered a critical failure you swing your elbow back toward her and all you succeed in doing is pushing back on the stake that's jabbing into you, the sharp object that she has impaled you on. And it's just misjudged. It's an accident. It's a mistake. It's something that you could not have predicted. But it is what it is. You feel the spike pierce the thin membrane of your heart slide through the pulpy husk that was there in the centre of your chest. It renders you, for the most part, unconscious. Once again, you can hear muffled voices. You lose track of time. You lose track of space. You can feel your beast raging inside you, wanting to break free. But whatever is in your heart isn't letting you go. You're occasionally just hearing muffled voices, muffled... <laughs> and sometimes words escape through. Sometimes you hear familiar voices. You are fairly certain you hear Zingaretti. Yes, you recognise that rasp, that irritating gurgle he has between words. You hear him say, This entire room... <laughs> It's got to be cleared up before the other two wake. That's what she's commanded. 
get rid of the body, bleach the damn floor, I don't care, no trace, no trace, get rid of her, get rid of her stuff, stick her in a bag, get her, get her to Blumenau, get her to Blumenau, NOW! The next one of you to wake up is Natalie. It is dark outside, thankfully. Walking into the main section of your hotel room, no one else is up as far as you can see. But then you can hear the creaking of the small games room uh, bed that you know that John was sleeping on and... Soon he's showing his face in the main atrium, too. Hello. Hey. Did you, uh, sleep alright? Yeah, it was nice underneath the desk. Good, good. I kind of, um, rub my mouth a little, feeling a tinge of hunger. Got the need to eat soon, I think to myself. I kind of see Natalie, and then I look around. Where's, uh... Where's Maria? Um, I don't know. I... haven't seen her... all evening. That isn't good. I begin looking around the whole apartment, uh, seeing if I can find any trace of Maria. Where has she gone? Don't you think she's just doing... I don't know... bodyguard stuff? Well, fuck, I don't know, Natalie. The whole entire job's going to shit right now. Oh, fuck, you don't think she... She said she wanted to do stuff by herself. It's not what... I kind of hold my hands to my face. That's not what you do in this situation. Fuck. What do you mean? Going off on your own right now, like, we need... We're the only people we got, you know? Yeah... That was a shame, Ray. Yeah. Yeah, that was a shame. <sighs> this whole operation has gone to shit. I don't think it's that bad. I mean, one person died. That's pretty okay, isn't it? <sighs> I kind of give you a bit of a look. And then s s sort of shrug. Well, <laughs> if it was just one person, sure. Who cares, but... The issue is, we got God knows how many of the family here turning tail. We're completely in enemy territory. And if we go back empty-handed, well, fuck, I don't know. I'm going to get a slap on the wrist, and I don't know what's going to happen to you. I don't know either. I think we're going to be fine. Um, But we kind of have to figure out what we're going to do. Like, we can't just sit around here and wait for her to come back? I go in to check in the bedroom, seeing I imagine no sign of even her belongings. I already checked. I can't see anything. Ah. You know... I think you're fucking right. You're right. We, I, I don't even fucking know her. <laughs> I think of the, this, whole, this whole group, you're the only person I even know. Oh, even... that's very cool of you. I like it. Hey, I didn't mean it like that. I mean... No, no, no. That's fine. Stick with that. That's that's healthy sometimes, to just detach. I actually smile for a moment, and I say... <laughs> you actually think... Do you think this is funny? I mean, you're making it sound like it's funny, and I'm actually laughing, which is bad. That's bad, you know. Okay? No, I don't think it's particularly funny. I just think that... Sometimes, maybe, you just have to to accept that death happens to everyone, and sometimes a little quicker than you expect it to. I've been intending to avoid my own death for at least a little longer. Okay, but you're right, you're right. She can take care of herself, I've got to assume she's okay, and she's doing her thing. Okay. Okay. I mean, out of everyone that's left, I think she's the most capable of protecting herself. 
I wouldn't do much good for her anyway. I suppose you got a point. I mean, you got all your laundry, but it's not of much use when we don't know where she is, is it? No. All right. Okay. I've been thinking. I begin sort of pacing back and forth around the flat. Okay. Especially with just the two of us. Fucking gunning every single person we see is not gonna- it's not gonna work. It ain't gonna work. My idea- what- uh, you can tell me what you think. At least- She said two of the family were gunning for them, right? Two. Yeah. We got four names. Now surely not every single one of them is gonna be fully on board. I mean, you know, the whole- <laughs> The joining of the families is fucking recent. Like, we all used to be completely separate. I, I I know that much. So the idea that all of these different names suddenly all are working together, happy families, that don't sit right with me. One of them has got to know that even if they kill you and me, and her, and Ray, that's not going to be the fucking end of it. We were the fucking negotiators. We were sent to see what was up and maybe, I don't know, off one person. When the Giovanni back in, back home find out about this, they're gonna fucking send people. And they're not gonna be so chatty. One of them's gonna know that. And they, if they think the Anarchs here are gonna help out, I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, you know, you're really nervous and, like, stressed about a lot of things. For, like, an undead person. I kind of blink a few times. And I say, well, yeah, I mean, in this, if I was up to me, I'd be getting out of here. We're freaking outgunned. I'm not an idiot. But at the same time, we can't. Well, you wait for Maria. For a while, anyway. An hour passes. So far, Maria hasn't returned. The two of you have been sat, occasionally listening, Natalie, to John's panicked murmurings while you've been giving him well, incredibly cold comfort. There's undoubtedly the thought in your mind that, well, you know, Sammy's in town, and based on the deal you made with him last night, it may not be long before you hear from him again. How does that make you feel? Annoyed. Most of all. A little nervous, but not something I show. I most of all try not to think about it. I try to keep my focus elsewhere. Your phone rings. I look at the call ID. It's Mo Bray. You left a message for him last night. I'm gonna pick it up. Hello? Natalie? Yes? How is Atlantic City? I've had fun our times. You seemed very distressed in your message to me. Have things calmed down? Well, it's only been a couple of hours since I last heard from Sammy. So... So far, I suppose. Make sure you're feeding yourself. You need to look after yourself. I'm not there to bring the bags to you. I am feeding. I don't know what to do with Sammy. You heard what I, what I said in the voice message, right? I did. I can't say I'm particularly happy about it either. This isn't a scenario that I had envisioned. But family is family. Natalie. We do what we have to to keep the peace. I'm sure you can think of a way to make things peaceful. No? I can think of a way to make things peaceful, yeah. Well, how about you call me once? Whatever plan you have is put into action. I can do very little for you all the way up here in New York, but... I can at the very least 
applaud or condemn whatever decision you make. You know, this is the first time you've really been let off the leash. I'm expecting good things. I'm hoping for good things. I want it so that when you come back to New York, you don't feel the need to just hide all the time. You wanted one body part, right? <laughs> one body part, some Vitae, some Ash. It's all much the same. It's very difficult to preserve the body part of a vampire. He hangs up. I think I have an idea of what we can do. Having given you a moment of privacy while you made your phone call and scanning windows, because I'm really paranoid at this moment in time, I come over and I say, yeah? Oh, Natalie, I'd, I'd actually generally like to hear what you think. What do you think? What can we do? How about... You, neither of us like Sammy, right? I mean, I know I don't. I'll be perfectly honest with you. The guy's a fucking asshole. Not to mention, I gave my word to your... Uh, you know, uh, I guess, not sire, but sire, you sire, know. Sire, yeah, my yes, sire. your sire, yeah. Mm -hmm. I gave my word to him. I'll look out for you, and I don't fucking lie. That's why I was able to lie to him, because fuck, I'm not breaking my original word for that asshole, so no. And funnily enough, something tells me giving you over to him is not looking out for you, so no. Fucking well, that, that would be, be the, the complete opposite of that, that's correct. So, how about we kill Sammy G? How does that sound to you? I mean, to be perfectly honest with you, it sounds fucking great, and I was thinking it was the only way we're going to be able to deal with him. But, the question is, how? He'll know that I could try something. Uh, I'm not a great liar. So, yeah, what, what do you think? And not only that... Right now, he is the only hope you have of taking the fight to these rogue Hecata in Atlantic City. How about we sit down... ...with the Anarch Baron? How about we just talk to Sink already, get a meeting with the Anarch Baron, tell them we have no beef with them, because honestly right now the only reason we are here is was... It was because of some... Milliner business I don't give a fuck about. So how about we just squash this beef, as they say? Kill Sammy and call it a night. It's not a bad plan. I mean, I had been thinking. If we can sell it to the Anarchs. And hell, we're not really selling it, it's the fucking truth. We aren't here to cause problems. If anything, these Hikada are gonna cause some fucking problems, because they are gonna get more people sent. They can kill us right now, no one's gonna fucking care. They'll send better people next time to actually deal with them. We weren't expecting this, this was supposed to be a little hello, so... Yeah, maybe we sell them that, yeah? Yeah. I mean, I think that's the only way out of this, because we can't protect ourselves now. Especially with Maria gone. Well, if she is gone, I don't know where she is. Yeah, it's a smart move. And they are picking us out one after one. And we are doing nothing about it. We can't do anything about it. So we have to wave the white flag. Because I have no business here. You have no business here. And as you said, you don't intend to die just now. I nod. And then I frown a little and say, question is, that route is good, but then, but then fucking Sammy G will turn up and fucking be like, hey, time to deliver. What do we do then? Mm, we have to figure out a clever plan to kill him, don't we? He's not a very smart guy. Trust me, I know him. But he has resources. That's what makes Sammy scary. So we need to get Sammy... Alone, and I don't think that's going to be too difficult if I'm the bait. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking. Guys like Sammy, he'll be expecting me to try something. 
but they never expect, well, actually, on the contrary, they do expect me to chicken out and do exactly as he fucking says, but maybe we could play that on him. How? Alone. Oh, fuck. I, I, I look visibly uncomfortable as I say, well, I don't want to ask you to do anything, Natalie. You don't want to fucking do. I, I can't. So, I don't know. You tell me. Well, I think the best way to get him alone alone is to rent a hotel room somewhere. Um, and... Because that's the only place where I know he won't have any of his security guards or anyone waiting around. If it's... If he's under the impression that I just want to have him one-on-one -on -one and want to rekindle things, I think we can... We could probably... Figure out how to isolate him, and you will, of course, have to hide somewhere. I can do that. In fact, if anything, that's what I do. I, uh... Yeah. Before we do that, we need to talk to Sigaretti to get a meeting with Yannick Baron. Have a sit down. Tell them that we don't want anything anymore. We don't want this drama. We're over it. And, yeah. What do you think? I think I knew that you, uh... I knew you'd be able to help. See? I told you. I'm glad. I don't think I could have done this on my own. So yeah. I'm I'm with you. Let's fucking do it. Let's... To be honest, I was always better at words anyway than the, the violence. Uh... You know what we could do too? Just to... Spice things up a bit? You see, um, Natalie... Smile, one of the first times ever. Um, we could blame Sammy <laughs> for the leak. We could, we could blame him for race death. We could blame him for everything. You know, the funny thing is, in a way, that isn't even a lie. Almost like, okay, it's a little, little white lie, but if he. He was here the whole fucking time. He could have been helping us the whole fucking time. And he didn't, because he's a fucking asshole. No, because Sammy, Sammy, he just wants one thing. He wants me. And if he doesn't get that, he's going to act like a little child and fuck things up. And as long as I have him on my good side, I think we can manipulate him quite easily. Oh, I know. I know, and hey, it will... The disguise will be perfect, because if I do exactly as he fucking tells me, and you see me clench my fist, it's exactly what he'll fucking expect. Because I'm a fucking Putinesca, right? I wouldn't dare stand up to a Giovanni. Exactly. So, we have a little plan. Let's get in touch with Sink already. Um, and... Talk to him about getting a meeting with Yannick Brown. I nod. I go to quickly check my belongings checking over a few of the spare ammunition I bought, and also taking out a few small vials. I only have one or two at the very back of the bag. These vials contain an odd mixture of saliva, vitae, and a few other things. What's that? Oh, uh, kind of uh, an emergency plan. Are you familiar with this sort of thing? I, if anything, I'd have thought maybe you know more about it than I do. I have no idea what you're talking about. What are you... You have a vial of blood and spit and something else. Well, uh... Funny story, uh... <laughs> I've only done it once before, but, uh... Apparently, if you rub this stuff on a corpse... And say the magic words... We... I can make, uh... You know, dead people walk around. Not like oh. fucking like a zombie army or anything, like in the movie, that's ridiculous, but you can kind of make them do shit. Have you not been shown this? Yeah, I, I have, but I don't know how to do it myself. I, I, I did it once, it's fucking gross. Uh, oh, we need, no, 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 we need to do that. That's not gross at all, that's beautiful. Okay. <laughs> well, it's hard to get an action. You need a dead model for starters. And you can only- That's not hard. All right, well, I, I, I know how to do it, if you think we can use it. 
Oh, that's wonderful. Okay, um, so do you have any idea how we get in touch with Zingaretti? I'd have thought we'd just go downstairs and go, Hey, Zingaretti, how's it going? Can you help us? Yeah, he's probably in. Alright, you know, I'm gonna let you lead, because I don't think they take me very seriously, to be honest with you. Are you ready for that? Hey, I'm not lying, so I'll be fine. <laughs> no, I guess we're not. Just manipulating a bit. That's okay. Taking a look around the hotel room for possibly the last time. Strange, this is actually the nicest place you, either of you have lived, such as it is, uh, existed, in some years when compared to John's bedsit and Natalie's sewer come mausoleum. There's a part of you that's going to miss this luxury even though you never really got a chance to experience it. Heading on to the elevator, you make your way to Zingaretti's floor. Because you were arriving there earlier than last time, the secretary is still in attendance outside of his office. There's a few people hustling and bustling backwards and forwards. Uh, maybe accountants or cashiers. After all, this is where the uh, casino workers, at least the people counting the bills, come. But you can see his doors there, tall, golden, ominous. Lead the way. I pat myself down, making sure I'm armed. From now on, I never just enter a room. I take a few seconds, look down both corridors. Time to do things how I normally do. Enough of this diplomacy. Well, <laughs> I guess the diplomacy mission's over now. In a way. Let's see. I will gently push open the door. Excuse me, sir. Have you got an appointment? Yeah. And I go in. But sir, sir, are you following him, Natalie? Uh, I guess I am. Uh, could we could... Oh, oh God. We pick up with Maria as a spike is removed from her chest. However, her restraints have not been removed. The hunger right now on your lips, in your throat, burning in your chest is extreme. Again... It takes everything you have to not just rage and devolve into the beast that you know you can be, that you've been many times before, especially when it's come time to hunt down particularly vile, malodorous men who have preyed on your wards, individuals you've chosen to protect as a sister of the Bahari. That's when you generally let the animal inside off its leash, when you can feed and kill with impunity and it's that beast that feels like it's boiling up but where you are right now where you are right now you're not surrounded by men you're not surrounded by at first you don't think you're surrounded by anyone you recognize but then you see a guy he's you can see side of his face yeah, you recognise the scar from last night. And on the opposite side of a table to you, you think you're in an office. Oh, by Lilith, you are back in that damn laundrette. And opposite you is the Anarch Baron that Ray was meeting with. Edith Blumenau. She's dressed. She's dressed well, but not super stylish. There's other figures in shadows in the room around you, but your eyes are fixed on her. You are bound to your chair and to the table with heavy chains. 
I am so sorry that this happened to you. Sorry? I I can see that you're very unhappy, very upset, and I understand. I truly do. It's... uh, I wish it hadn't come to this. I, I, I didn't want for it to come to this. I want you to know that. Then why did you let it happen? I, d- I didn't let it happen. My understanding was that when I sent you and Ray, wasn't it, to meet with Strand and Labango, they would intimidate you, threaten you, and that you would go your own way. They decided to take matters into their own hands. They decided they would send a clearer message. And in their mind, the best way to do that was, sadly, with what happened to Ray. I suppose you should be grateful it didn't happen to you. Did you have that wrong? My sisters won't take me back now. I failed them. Your sisters? Why, I thought the family... Your Hecata is more than just, uh, women, no? <laughs> uh, the Hecata are the family that I didn't choose. Really, they're more of the annoying, overbearing parent that thinks that they know the best and will push you around. No, my loyalty are to my Bahari sisters. And they told me that I had to protect Raymond. Interesting. Curious. Why would the Bahari of... Where is it that you're from? Boston. Why would the Bahari of Boston want you protecting some Melina scrub? Hmm. Fuck if I know. Well, I suppose I'm going to have to ask them because you're addressing... Not just the Anarch Baron of Atlantic City, but also the Matron. The... Edith gestures at herself. We are starting something great in Atlantic City, Sister Maria. We are growing a new garden here. And... It was imperative that I found good, loyal soldiers to help protect that garden and cultivate it, and those disenfranchised Hecata, those rogue Hecata, those anarch Hecata, if you like, were the perfect, perfect converts. They'd been abused by their own family for many years. They were just looking for a group that appealed to them, that offered them some kind of hope and redemption, a future, and their own family wasn't doing that. So I suppose we're not so different, you and I, as they say in the movies. I am just flabbergasted by this turn of events. I'm not certain that I can believe it. How can I trust that you're a servant of the Dark Mother? I could really ask you the same thing. Maybe it's something you already knew about me, hmm? She puts her fingers through her hair. Maybe this is something you researched about Edith Blumenau before you came down to Atlantic City and you thought that you could try talking Bahari with me and try and win some favour, hmm? I can't really flatter you that much. I I had no idea that there was being gardens set up. It's a long way from home. Well, there are many gardens and there are many different flowers that we grow, after all. Uh, we all have to protect our herds and our allies, our sisters, our, our congregations, in our own way don't we? Now, we have a bit of an issue here, Maria. Because if you are who you say you are, well, I've just attacked a sister of the Bahari. And we don't attack each other. And that's a horrible mistake. A horrible mistake. A mistake I would have never wanted to make. 
And with what happened to Ray, well, phew, if he was... Well, if the Bahari asked that he was protected, the Bahari of Boston, and now the Bahari of Atlantic City have eliminated him, that is also a problem. I'm sure you agree. Well, it certainly isn't a lovely misunderstanding, now, is it? No. Do, do you need a drink? I understand you've lost quite a lot of blood. Oh. It would it would be completely uh, unkind of me to not offer you a drink, uh, given what you've been through as a fellow sister. It seems like the most rational thing is to say no. However, my blood is just... Are you nodding? Are you agreeing? Or are you giving the stony silence? I give her a firm nod. At a girl. Don't worry. I have just the vessel. She snaps her fingers and the man with the scar walks over. I have a number of blood dolls, as they sometimes call them in Elysia, and they are only too happy to spill some blood to help water our gardens, as they say. Uh, So, especially given what he did to you, uh, he is still nursing those broken ribs, but I think he owes you a little more. Um, Jay, could you give her your wrist? Sure. He puts his wrist to your mouth and closes his eyes. How very brave. I suppose you've never had a lamine feed of you, hmm? His eyes open at that and he looks at Bloom and Al. She says, you're going to let it happen, Jay. I'll reward you later. (laughs) You can see this as a bit of a payback, I suppose. I laugh. And I'll bite into his wrist. His scream is excruciating. It's almost distracting to you. He clutches his forearm. The pain from your bite is immeasurably more than any the, from any other vampire. The curse of the Hecata, the curse of the Lamier, is such a vicious, a torturous bite. And so as you drain blood from his arm, he is doing all he can to not pass out, to not lose his footing, to not just pull away. But Blumenau's eyes lock with his, and he holds in place. Do you drain him until he passes out, or do you let him up after you've taken your fill? Mm, It's very tempting to drain him. But I suppose that I shouldn't overstay my welcome. So I will try to let him go before he passes out. You pull your fangs from his wrist and now he staggers back. But don't worry, Jay, I'll give you some of mine later. All we made well, you'll be feeling quite all right. Your usual talkative self. He hobbles off. Now, Maria, back to business. And thank you for taking the time to drink and trust us with that. Our main concern now is that, yes, letting you go is going to land us in a whole heap of trouble. But only if what you're saying is true. And I need to check whether what you've said is true. I'm no master of prying truths out of individuals. I'm not some interrogator. But I can make a quick phone call, or I can send a letter, or I can make the journey to Boston myself and speak to the sisters of the Bahari there. I have a lot of options. I could even use one of my own people to do that for me. The one thing I can't do is just let you go. If you had made it a lot simpler, Maria, if you had just said, 
that you accepted my apology, that you would leave, that you would gather your coterie members and go. If you hadn't even answered that you were a member of the Bahari, I probably wouldn't be as concerned. But the fact is, you have said that, and that means I have to rethink my entire plot. D- do you understand? Well, I'm sorry to have thrown a hatchet into your plans, but it is what it is. Indeed, I know it's nothing personal. Nothing personal. Yeah. Likewise, what we are going to do to you is nothing personal. It is just business until things are resolved. What are you going to do to me? Well, we're going to probably put that stake back into you. Until we have found out what's what. Are you going to object? Are you going to try fighting? Well, you, uh... I mean, you're a strong woman. I saw what you did to my uh, servants. At least one of them. Uh, The other one's body has already been disposed of. So, you may well break through those chains, threaten me with your fists and feet, even your fangs. In which case, we will have to have something of a... knockdown, drag-out fight. But there are more of us than there are of you. And I promise you that... I won't leave you waiting too long before I let you know that I verified your story, have offered apologies to Boston if that's what's required, and then you're free to do whatever you wish. It seems like the best action for me is to stay put, sadly enough. Huh, that I rather expected a fight. No matter, that's absolutely fine. Don't worry, I can give it to you. However, However, if you are indeed one of the Bahari sisters, then going against you would not really curry any favor back with my sisters. And my primary concern right now is to somehow gain their favor back. So... I appreciate that you can you care considerably more about your status with the Bahari than with those uh, two that you left in the hotel room. That That is encouraging to me, because it means you're probably telling the truth, and as I say, it means that this uh, paralysis that you will be in will only be brief. At least having just fed, you won't become some dried-out uh, mummy. Uh, not Not for a while, anyway. So, we're going to put a stake back through you, and it will probably hurt a little. But if you don't resist, I promise this is going to be seamless. Next time you wake, well, next time you wake, it will be good news. I'm sure. Well, I'm looking forward to that, sister. Well, allow me to do the honours, then. And she walks over to where you're sat. And she picks up what is an iron spike that was through your chest before. (laughs) So crude. Like an iron railing. Something on the edge of a garden, I suppose. Mm. I'm going to puncture you from the back if that's alright, I'd rather not make another messy wound. Mm, Not one for eye contact, are you? (laughs) As a member of the clan of the Rose, I prefer beauty even in injury. I wouldn't want to mutilate you. And so, if you are not resisting, she pushes that spike back through the frayed edges of the wound that is yet to heal. and punctures your heart again. You have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we played The Family, a Cults of the Blood Gods chronicle for Vampire the Masquerade 5th edition. Cults of the Blood Gods is published by our friends at Onyx Path Publishing. Our storyteller was the gentleman gamer Matthew Dawkins, and we were also joined by Jason Carl, Clara Herbal, and Bianca Savazzi. 
The music was created by Atrium Carceri, featuring many collaborations with other artists from their label Cryo Chamber. Check them out at cryochamber.bandcamp.com and their YouTube channel for more amazing dark ambient. If you want more Vampire the Masquerade content, don't miss out on our chronicle No Man is an Island, as well as The Sacrifice for Chicago by Night. We would like to give massive thanks to our champions of the Red Moon, Martin Hoyshaubert, Nastasha Rollerson, Simon Cooper, and David, for their generous support. And we would of course like to thank all of our other patrons. Without your support, the show would not be possible. If you want to support our work, please check us out on Patreon. You can get access to bonus campaigns for Cult of Entity Lost and Coriolis there, as well as get early and raw access to all of our recordings. You can also hear your name read on the show as a champion of the Red Moon, as well as play Cult with us. Most importantly, that support is what keeps the show going, so do check us out there. Thank you again for listening, and see you soon again.